All right, when you're going to improvise over something, ideally you want to solo over something that doesn't sound bland or boring or that's not but it's not complicated either. So, take ACDC for example. Let's say like the chorus is shoot the thrill. You got an A chord, a G chord, and then you got a D chord. Those are the only three chords I'm going to use, and I'm just going to alter my strumming, okay? So, we take those chords, and then I could go like... And I could repeat that, and that, that's going to be my riff that I'm going to solo over. It's simple... It's got a little strumming do it going on to it. Nothing, nothing too crazy or anything, but it works. So let's see what it sounds like. All right. So I'm assuming you know a little bit of rock lick. So I'm gonna play a couple basic ones that I'm gonna use. That's one of them. Any of those basic rock licks, they all sound easy. Any one of them, you can take and apply it to that. So let's throw in a little bit of rhythm. So take some of your favorite licks, make up a simple chord progression, and just see and see if you can get some licks to fit. So if I'm if I'm playing an A chord, I want to hit an A. When I switch to that G, I want to complement that G note. See how I end on that G right there? And when I go to D. I want to compliment that note, so I go. So ideally, when you got your chord changes, you want to solo to that chord, basically. So if I'm playing an A, I want to play a lick that bends or starts or stops on an A. If I go to the G, I want to I want to stop on G or start. Then D. So the idea is when you're doing chord changes, you want to play to and from that note, but add in a little extra flavor. Another tip when it comes to improvising is to know some basic scales and uh, some boxes on the fretboard. For example, this lick in B. That little riff is in B minor pentatonic. So you want to play the B minor pentatonic scale. You don't just want to go up and down it like this. You don't want to do it. You want to use that scale, but you want to do it in a way where it doesn't sound like you're just going up and down that scale. So if I'm playing a B minor pentatonic, 
I probably would not want to play want to play major pentatonic. Probably wouldn't want to do that. Um, I probably would not play a minor scale over it. It's kind of a fucked up minor scale, but you get the idea. I would just stick with the B minor pentatonic and know your boxes. So this is one box for the pentatonic. <laughs> So that's, that's one box right there for a B pentatonic. One other key is you wanna you wanna change it up. So you wanna get into different boxes. So I'm um, I'm gonna go up a box and I'm still in B. Notice how it still sounds like a minor pentatonic. That's what you want. Here's another way to practice improvisation. Record a riff on your looper, loop it, and try creating another guitar riff over the top of that and see what happens. Notice as the main riff was played down here, and what I was doing up here. What I'm doing here, I'm finding chords across the fretboard. Now this is useful because not only can you play chords when you find them, you also got arpeggios to play. So you got your chords and arpeggios. And then what you can do from there is once you got those two, you can go like, oh, well if this is an A chord, and this is an A chord, I can arpeggiate this and make it fit better with the original riff and make it sound a little bit nicer even though I'm using the same chords but just using some articulation on it to make it sound different. Another tip that's going to help your improvisation is to know where, know where the notes are on the fretboard. Again, using the same basic chord example that we are using. Alright, so that little chord progression, it's in the key of A. You want to be able to know where your notes are, notes are on the fretboard. If I know, well, this is an A, and I play this lick, I know this is an A too, so that's going to work there as well. Go up an octave, right here, that's an A, that'll work too. So knowing where your notes are on a fretboard without having to search for them is really good to know. Because you, if you know what key your chord progression is to, you can just jump right into the improvisation and know what notes to start on. The next step for improvisation is to apply what you know. When you first start out improvisation, you will suck. You're going to make mistakes a thousand times, you're going to fuck shit up, and you're going to redo it multiple, multiple times until you get it right. Which is okay, because I started at the same place. I sucked at improvising at first. I didn't know how anybody could do it, really. How did they come up with that? It took quite a while, but once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. But the key things are you got to know some basic scales. 
you gotta go know where your notes are on the fretboard. It helps to know a little bit of basic theory. You wanna know some basic licks. And most importantly, is don't try to think too hard about it. Otherwise, you're just gonna ruin your flow and you're not gonna be able to express yourself in a way that you normally would if you were just thinking about it too hard. So you want to learn as much as you can from when you're, from your influences. They're going to help shape who you are as a player. It's up to you to take those licks and then use them and make them your own. Any chord, guitar lick, or anything that you can play on guitar is useless until you can apply it to something. I can know all this theory, I can know where every single note on the fretboard, I can know every single lick, know what key, know what skill or point anybody's playing in, but if I can't apply that, I don't know anything. Alright guys, thanks for watching, so I'm going to end this video on a little jam on the loop pedal, so please like and subscribe.